Here on this channel, we talk a lot about political disagreements, and honestly, I don't want you guys to get the impression from me that political disagreements on their own are fine. One of the big issues I have when I discuss videos, when I respond to videos, is the fact that a lot of the people that I discuss or respond to are actively lying. However, lying is an intentional act. When you lie, you acknowledge the truth and then you subvert it in order to achieve your own personal gains. There's also another thing that we talk about on this channel that doesn't fall under this category, although sometimes it can be mixed with it. And that is complete and utter delusion, foolishness, buffoonishness. And this was on full display during Jank Uger's appearance on April 1st, very fitting, on the PBD podcast. Now, unfortunately, this podcast took phone calls and I wasn't aware of it until the last 20 minutes when it was live. So I did not get to call in and confront Jank directly on his lies. However, they were all over this thing and we have to discuss it because a lot of them are lies, but they range into the realm of complete and utter delusion. And that is just amazing to me. So as a sociological experiment, we are going to dive into this podcast. That being said, this video is sponsored from one of our long-term sponsors. Remember, supporting the sponsors supports the channel, Keto with Justice. It is incredibly difficult to lose weight. This is due in part to the fact that we are surrounded by things that are meant to induce bad cravings in us, like fast food chains, that are everywhere in this country. But also, your body's actually working against you, because after age 20, every single decade, your metabolism slows down by about 4% a year. So you need a secret weapon, and the secret weapon that that I've been using to help manage my weight is keto with justice this thing right here this little magical powder you put it in your drink in the morning and it can help you prolong a state of ketosis which is a fat burning state this has worked better for thousands of people than any of the other fads that you guys hear about and it's based on the same principles as the keto diet I recommend it as a supplement to your diet but it can work on its own to help you meet your weight loss goals and if you're interested in trying this and you're out there in my audience guess what if you go to keto ketowithjustice.com you can get 51% off your order that's ketowithjustice.com get one of the better weight loss supplements out there trust me so right off the bat I have to point out and make this obvious that I am not a regular listener of this podcast I've actually never heard of this podcast and that is not a knock against the podcasters the team or anything like that because it's a podcast and the internet is a gigantic place even though their YouTube channel may be at exactly the same amount of subscribers that I have on this YouTube channel, they probably have a much larger audience due to the fact that they're simulcasting on all the podcasting platforms. So credit where credit is due and give them credit for getting this interview with Jank Uger. Also, I'm going to give credit to the host of this podcast for pressing Jank on specific issues that Jank does in the past that sets me up beautifully to make this video. Because Jank Uger was in rare form on this show. Jank Uger has delusions of grandeur and this was was on full display live during the course of this podcast so we're gonna go into it we're gonna start first and foremost with the Joe Rogan portion of it because I find this hilarious and Jenk actually doubles down on his idea that he could potentially beat up Joe Rogan Joe Rogan the jujitsu specialist Joe Rogan a guy who's an MMA guy is gonna get beat up by Jenk who's morbidly obese okay let's talk about the Joe Rogan um Joe, uh, uh, you were on Joe, I want to say 13 or 14. I don't know what it was. It was uh, when you guys were on. It was fantastic, by the way. When Thank you. Um, I, yeah, it was a while back. Yeah. But you made a comment. You said, you know, if Joe something, I'd kick his ass. I, I'm, again, I'm taking yeah. it out of context. Yeah. I, of course, I'm assuming you were just kidding. You were yeah. upset about what he said. Can you unpack that exchange? You yeah. Know, comments you made about Rogan. Yeah, so I like Joe a lot. And, and uh, we even grabbed lunch. We were friendly. I was thinking of... Uh, uh, I even pitched him to be a host on a show we'd pitch to cable or networks, et cetera. Okay. Really? And yeah. And, uh, and, and I like Joe's independent attitude a ton, right. Or what used to be an independent attitude, right. Uh, nowadays, uh, I think he's lost his way. So I think, uh, he got captured by the right wing. He doesn't even realize it. Almost all of his guests are right wing or fake left wingers who are pushing for right wing agenda. And so, and that's he surrounded himself with a wall of right wingers and he's created a bubble. Bill Maher is the same way. A wall of right wingers. They're all they're all their friends are right wing, right? 
And so now he, he's not independent. He he doesn't do both sides. He doesn't have real. You think he's a right wing? Yeah, of course. You Joe. think Joe's right wing? Yeah, I do. Yeah. And so is he right, right of wing? where, though, Jake? No, do I think he's right, right wing? of center or right of you? No, right of center. So first, we got to start with Jenks' alleged issue with Joe Rogan. And Jenks' alleged issue with Joe Rogan is apparently, theoretically and hypothetically, maybe metaphorically, who knows, Joe Rogan is this big right winger. He's been captured by the right wing. And Jenk bases the capture of Joe Rogan by the right wing on the guests that he has because Joe Rogan only has right wing guests on his show except for fake left wingers which Jank Uger of course defines as people further to the left than him that he doesn't get along with so so Joe it's a matter of emphasis so i hear that he's pro choice but does he ever talk about that almost never right uh, but on any right wing issues, oh my God, trans rights, this, that, the other thing, he's like super animated about, right? Whenever it's a right wing issue, he will spend hours and hours and hours discussing it. If he has left wing positions, not a peep. There's a thing called audience capture where your audience starts to go in a certain direction, it starts to build momentum. Then if you try to change, all of a sudden your audience numbers drop and people panic. OK, now Joe's already rich, so he doesn't have to worry too much about that. I think he got more guests, guests captured than audience captured. But like guys like Jimmy Dore get audience captured like crazy. So once they like Jimmy Dore used to be on the left and he comedian. was doing comedian. Right? He was in our network. One of the worst mistakes I've ever made. So the first thing that you need to understand about Jank Uger, the first thing that you need to know about Jank Uger and his logic, which of course is a lack of logic, is that Jank is a dichotomous thinker. If you're not one thing, you're definitely the other. If you're not with him, then you're his enemy, and all of his enemies are right wing. So even if they're further to the left than him, like Jimmy Dore, they must be right wing because he's fighting with Jimmy Dore. And even though Jimmy Dore was on his network, and even though they used to be friends, now they're fighting. So that therefore makes Jimmy Dore a right winger because that's how Jank Uger's brain works. So Joe Rogan is being afflicted by the same accusations that Jank throws at everybody he disagrees with, everybody that he doesn't get along with personally because this is what Jank Uger does. But what's interesting is the evidence that Jank Uger presents to talk about how Joe Rogan is allegedly theoretically, hypothetically and metaphorically a right winger because the first thing that Jank brings up is that Rogan doesn't talk about abortion. So, so Joe, it's a matter of emphasis. So I hear that he's pro-choice, but does he ever talk about that? Almost never, right? Now I need to make this clear that Jank Uger right here is lying. Jank Uger knows for a fact that he's lying, and the reason Jank knows for a fact that he's lying is because this conversation also mixes in Jank Uger challenging Joe Rogan to a fight over Twitter and how Jank, even to this day, thinks that he can beat Joe Rogan. And the reason that is crucial is because after Jank Uger first accused Joe Rogan of never talking about abortion, some noble YouTuber on the internet.com on a channel called Actual Justice Warrior cut together Joe Rogan talking about his pro-choice position with Jank Uger saying that Joe Rogan is somehow anti-abortion, put it out on Twitter, and when people were sharing that clip with Jank, Jank ended up challenging Joe Rogan to a fight in a quote tweet of that. So anyway. you guys are useless, you know what I mean? And Joe, by the way, you want to be a man? You know, you're like, MMA! I don't like trans people because I'm so manly! Okay, Joe, be a goddamn man. Why don't you tell your right-wing audience that making a woman carry a, a, a fetus to term is the very opposite of freedom. If she doesn't want to do it. If you're going to be a rational person, and I'm 100% pro-choice, but as a rational person, you have to look at what it actually is. If you don't, well, then we're playing a game. The game is you want your side to be correct. But the reality is, this is a very complicated, weird thing. Yeah. There's like a, a life in your body. And for sure, a guy shouldn't be able to tell a girl what she can do. Totally agree with that. You can't, you can't tell a woman she has to keep it. People have already aborted babies. There's a precedent for it. You can't tell them what they can do. So when Jenk says he heard that Joe Rogan is pro-choice in some way and he dismisses it like he's never seen any evidence of it, that is an outright lie. And the reason that is the example that he went to when they're discussing Jenk challenging Joe Rogan to a fight is because this was actually the impetus for Jank Uger to challenge Joe Rogan to a fight. 
So he knows he's lying, either that or he's completely deluded himself. And to be clear, to be obvious to the public out there, if you just Google Joe Rogan abortion, I didn't do any deep research in order to find this. It is one of the first clips that come up on YouTube. So this wasn't hard to find. Jank made an outlandish accusation. I disproved it easily with just a little bit of a search into YouTube, clicked on the first video, and now Jank is doubling down in public, even though the topic is him challenging Rogan to a fight, which was all inspired by people in my audience tweeting the clip of Jank lying about Joe Rogan's abortion position at him and saying that he's a coward and he's a liar because Jank was getting all tough in that video. But it actually gets even more interesting right here because the PBD podcast host, this guy right here, actually pushes back on Jank and says Joe Rogan said clearly that he would vote for Bernie Sanders. In fact, Bernie Sanders' campaign team very famously cut together clips of Joe Rogan to make it seem like Rogan Rogan was endorsing him in an official sense during the course of his campaign. And in, in regards to him being right wing, like that is a, the guy said he would vote for Bernie Sanders. Yeah, I mean, I a, you guys a, had found common yeah, ground he, on yeah, that. He, okay, yeah, he did, yeah, right? Yeah. And I so that was like the last semblance of him being independent. Since then, he's gone completely in the other if, direction. One hundred percent in the other direction. If there, and by the way, he supported Trump. Trump's a lunatic. So, I mean, you can't say you're going to vote for... What do you mean he supported Trump? He, he said that he... Uh, look, if I'm wrong, I'm happy to, to yeah. retract it. But my understanding was... He said he doesn't like either option, but between Trump and Biden, he preferred Trump. Oh, at the time. Okay. okay. No, I, I, th think. I think the way... No, I think the way he said it... I think the way he said it is he, he thinks Trump... Uh, had a stronger way of dealing with things than Biden does. I don't think he said I would vote for Trump over Biden because he could clarify. He, By he, the way, why doesn't he clarify? That's such an easy thing. I, I think he does. Like, tr like yeah. Tucker won't say whether he took the, took the vaccine. Why don't you just say it? What's yeah. wrong with you, right? Yeah. Yo, well, who'd you vote for? What, what's the big deal? I mean, you do a show that's and, got politics all over it. Yeah. Well, why would you be afraid to say who you voted for? And if I remember with Jimmy, be somebody... a man. Now, since Jenk is aligned with Bernie Sanders, he completely converted his network, his online network, his supposed news network into an arm of the Bernie Sanders campaign, Jank is saying, oh, well, that is the last left-wing thing that Joe Rogan did. But he frames it even more ridiculously, saying that this is the last independent thing that Joe Rogan did. So Joe Rogan saying that he supported Bernie Sanders, somebody who is running for the Democratic nominee, is somehow deemed as an independent and virtuous thing. And Joe Rogan talking later with conservatives on his podcast, not changing who we would have supported during the presidential election, is him becoming right wing very interesting how that works but more crucially we also have an accusation from jank uger that joe rogan well, why would you be afraid to say who you voted for? and if i remember with jimmy be a man. voted for trump over Joe Biden. So the accusation from Cenk Uyghur is that he's pretty sure he thinks he's not, oh, let me, let me give it some caveats so when I get proven wrong or proven a liar, I have some plausible deniability that Joe Rogan supported Trump over Biden, that he actually voted for Trump. And what's interesting about Joe Rogan, who does a show that has these political people on it, is Joe Rogan has never clarified who he's voted for. Why doesn't he just do that? It's kind of like Tucker Carlson not clarifying whether or not he took the vaccine. It's very interesting. And this is possibly because Joe Rogan's secret right-wing audience, Joe Rogan right-wing, Joe Rogan bad guy because he doesn't have me on his show anymore, that must make him an evil right-winger and therefore a bad guy. But here's the thing, Joe Rogan did actually clarify who he voted for quite recently, and in fact, in the clip in question, which Jenk is referencing right now, where Joe Rogan talked about how Biden versus Trump would have dealt with foreign policy issues, that's where Joe Rogan said quite clearly who he did not vote for during the course of the presidential election. I want to play that for you so you can understand that Jank is referencing the same exact clip. Both of these people are referencing the same exact clip, but only one of them is accurately reporting on what the takeaway was from that clip. That was one of the things that people were saying that I was a Trump supporter during the election because I said mm -hmm. I would vote for Trump before I'd vote for Biden. Mm -hmm. Right here, if I were to just pull a Jank Uger and only use this portion of the clip and not take it any further, and pretend like the rest of this podcast, the rest of this clip 
doesn't even exist, you might get the impression that Joe Rogan is sympathetic to Trump. I mean, the context and the evidence around Joe Rogan and Trump would disabuse you of that notion because Joe Rogan apparently refused to have Trump on his podcast because he wasn't interested in doing so. But you might, based on this small snippet that Cenk Uger is referencing, believe that Joe Rogan actually a Trump supporter. Well, why would you be afraid to say who you voted for? And if I remember what Jimmy said, man. Said. That was one of the things that people were saying that I was a Trump supporter during the election because I said mm. I would vote for Trump before I'd vote for Biden. Mm hmm. But I didn't vote for either. Mm -hmm. I, I, the reason why I said that is like, I was like, you don't see this? Mm -hmm. Like, you guys out of your fucking mind? You don't see that this guy can't, he can't talk right anymore. Yeah. Go watch videos of him from 20 years ago. <clears throat> he was a, he was a dummy. He said a lot of silly shit. He lied about a bunch of things. Mm -hmm. But at least he was articulate. Nerd. Tulsi and I like, I like uh, Bernie. That's it. Oh, yeah? Everybody else can eat shit. Look at you, fucking progressive. Yeah. Well, I've always been. Yeah. What? Yeah. Everyone says you're right winger. They're out of their fucking mind. I've never voted right wing in my life. Really? Never. Never. I voted Democrat except for independent. I voted for Gary Johnson because he did my podcast. <laughs> People don't realize how par like I, I Yeah, I'm not I'm not right wing at all. But when Rogan says that he didn't vote for Trump in the same exact clip that Jank Uger is referencing as evidence of Joe Rogan's secret Trump support and how Joe Rogan never clarifies who he votes for, that kind of throws a monkey wrench into Jank's argument and it kind of exposes that Jank Uger will listen and tune out information that goes against his narrative because what he's really angry about when it comes to Joe Rogan is the fact that Rogan won't have him on his podcast anymore. Therefore, Joe Rogan must be right-wing because Joe Rogan gets along with some right-wing people who he has on his podcast. Jen can't accept the fact that due to his behavior, his repeated behavior and his repeated lies, Joe Rogan has lost respect for him, and that's the reason why he doesn't have him on the podcast. But of course, if you go to Jenk, he never lies at all, which we will get into a little bit later. That being said, I do want to play some of the clips of Jenk saying that if he trains for a whole bunch, he could beat Joe Rogan and the podcast host having absolutely nothing to do with that. Right. So that's what happens. So on Rogan to your actual the specific question. So now I have animosity with Rogan. But yeah, I was largely trolling them. Like it's, and I said it very clearly too. Never in the streets, never any violence. Violence is crazy. But I was saying, if you want to step in the ring, uh, I mean, obviously, you know what would happen if you stepped in the ring. You're not no. naive. Uh, so you know, would Joe have a massive advantage? Obviously, look at me. I'm 52. I'm ma I'm very overweight, etc. But by the way, I don't think it would be a foregone conclusion. I'm. Oh, you think you could take Joe? Okay. Now, now. Are you saying Shank. you can take okay. Rogan? <laughs> okay. Bro, one kick and decide you'd be peeing blood for a week. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen his kicks? Like, yeah, these? I've seen his kicks. Okay, so listen. I appreciate your confidence, though. I got to tell you. No, but I'll tell you why I do yeah. it. Okay, so look. Well, number one, I, I'm okay. A trained person is, of course, better, and by a lot, right? So, and a guy who's in shape is supposed to a guy not in shape by a lot. So I would do tons of training, etc., and I'd still be a massive underdog. Okay, but I'm a brawler. And and so it's not just that I fought my whole life when I was growing up, et cetera. It's the will in you, right? So if he's going to beat me, he's going to have to beat me. He will beat you, though. But yeah, and that's fair. Yeah. And so all these fake tough guys in the right wing. Joe is not a fake tough guy, though, bro. Look, I've been in some fights in my life. I'm a New York City kid, and growing up in New York City, you're going to get into the occasional fight or two growing up as a kid in New York City. And I am also nearly half as old as Jank Uger, so I have an age advantage, I'm a young guy, and all that. And I would absolutely never, even with the caveat that I would do intense training for a long time, get myself into fighting shape, go on TV, go on the internet.com, go out in public and proclaim that just give me some time, and I could definitely beat up a professional fighter whose kicks sound like thunder. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know what would happen if you stepped in the ring. You're not no. naive. Uh, so you know, would Joe have a massive advantage? Obviously, look at me. I'm 52. I'm, ma I'm very overweight, etc. But by the way, I don't think it would be a foregone conclusion. I'm. Oh, you think you could Stop. take Joe? Okay. Now, now. Are you saying Shank. you can take okay. Rogan? <laughs> Bro, okay. one kick and decide you'd be peeing blood for a week. <laughs> have you seen his kicks? Like, yeah, these? I've seen his kicks. Okay. So listen. I appreciate your confidence, though. I got to tell you. No, but I do. Uh, <laughs> Power up. Uh, <laughs> 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 
So I would do tons of training, etc., and I'd still be a massive underdog, okay? But I'm a brawler. And and so it's not just that I fought my whole life when I was growing up, etc. It's the will in you, right? So if he's going to beat me, he's going to have to beat me. He will beat you, though. Yeah, and that's fair. Yeah. Jen Uger is unbelievably delusional in every possible way, and he can't let this go. The podcast host knows he's being ridiculous. He's telling him to his face that he's being ridiculous, that he's not going to be able to beat Joe Rogan, that he knows what will happen if he ever, ever steps in the ring against Joe Rogan, which, by the way, Rogan wouldn't fight him. Rogan's one of those guys that doesn't have to boast in public about how tough he is because it is self-evident usually the guys that are always bragging about how they can beat everybody up are the ones with the most insecurity inside them that's definitely coming off of jank right now but jank undeterred is like listen it's not gonna be a cakewalk it's not gonna be a cakewalk i i, I will train i'll get myself into shape i know i'm 50 something years old rogan's 50 something years old by the way you guys barely even look like the same species because look at the shape that rogan keeps himself in versus jank but jank's like don't worry trust me i'm a brawler i've been getting into fights my whole life which is all the stuff that he said on twitter he didn't say i'm much bigger than Rogan I would definitely take him and all that no Jank you're ridiculous and absurd in every way and your ego needs a significant check because you can't beat up anybody let alone Joe Rogan and this idea that you're trying to prove that progressives are tough by challenging an MMA fighter just proves that progressives are incredibly insecure because again the whole basis for this is not even legitimate disagreement with Joe Rogan it's the fact that Rogan won't have you or Anna on the podcast so you're mad about that you're bitter about that so you're just desperately trying to get his attention then the alt-right had done this smear campaign against me where they took a joke about uh bestiality and pretended it was real like I had said it real. New York Times writes it like as if it's in my agenda. Jenk, who believes in legalizing sex with horses. I'm like, what the? This is the New York Times? Are you insane? Did, did no one in the building think, hey, guys, that sounds like it's probably a joke. Like, you guys want to double check? And they're like, nope, nope, just write it as if it's in his platform, right? That's an alt-right, total toxic sludge horse crap. That the New York Times printed. Why? Because they don't want a progressive winning. They can't control me. So I love this clip for a number of reasons. First and foremost, Jenk was not taken out of context with the whole horse thing when he was on current TV with the Young Turks. That was an actual position that Jenk Uger held, and the laughter in the video is people laughing at Jenk Uger. Also, this is something that he's brought up a couple of times on the Young Turks because Jenk has a weird issue or weird opinion related to the pleasure of animals. Animals. It's absurd in every way. We're not going to play that stuff because this is a family broadcast and we don't get into the gutter like that. But what I do want to talk about is the fact that Jenk is saying, oh, they took me out of context. And the podcast guy asked him point blank, do you ever do videos where you take people out of context? And Jenk is like, no, absolutely not. In fact, there was this one instance where we did a retraction because we were called out and everybody ran with the story. So it wasn't even really our fault with this guy out of context. And there's another instance where we heard a quote and we thought that was way too crazy for us to run with it because that's how ethical the Young Turks are. You don't, you don't think, you don't think everybody, for, so for example, let me put it back, I don't know, but you don't think people will say, well, Jenk, that's not fair because you guys do that at Young Turks. Would you say we never do that at Young Turks? We never do that at okay. Young Turks. So, so you don't take one snippet of, let's just say what, I don't know what a uh, Ann says or or who Ann is not uh, much in TV today. Media Ann Coulter, today. you're saying? Ann Coulter, or let's just say Shapiro or whoever. And you say, look what he said in this part, and you don't show the whole thing. So it, I'll give you an example. Yeah. It, when McCain, all the way back in 2008, because we've been around forever, uh, a local Arizona station had done an edited video of McCain's talk, and it made him look really bad. We thought the, it, it was not edited. We thought it was real. We aired it one day. The next day, our audience says to us, hey, you know that was edited. Here's the whole thing. We come back the next day. We say, our bad. We trusted that local station. They were wrong. They took McCain out of context. We don't like McCain at all, but you always have to be fair, and he didn't say that. Look at the context of what he actually said, right? So if you show me a clip where I'm missing context, I will definitely show that on air and go, wait a minute, let's look at the whole thing here. Because we don't need to lie to be right. When in reality, Jenks' entire channel, the basis of it, is ripping people out of context, quote mining them, and putting it out into the public. And then over time, that lie washing itself 
in the dishwasher that is Jenks' brain to come out and evolve into different things. And Jenks' apologies when he gets called out are absolutely horrible. Take the instance where he said that Sarah Palin called Black Lives Matter activists not people, even though in the original quote that was put up on screen in the original video, she clearly said peaceful. Jenk got called out for this, and the next day, Jenk issued this non-apology. A little while ago, I did a video on Sarah Palin and uh, how she attacked Black Lives Matter. And in that video, there's a word that's unclear. Uh, it could sound, it sounded both like people and peaceful. So I thought she said that they are not people. Uh, it turns out, I think that in this proper context, it is that she did say they are not, they were not peaceful. So now some of our detractors love that and made videos and tweets like, ah, you got it wrong, Jake, we win, you lose. Mommy, he got it wrong, mommy, he got it wrong. So we don't want to be wrong. Now, the essence of that video was overall absolutely right. She said Black Lives Matter is responsible for the violence. She said they're thugs. And I pointed out that her family literally caused a riot in Alaska. 20 people involved in a, in, in a fight, one violent episode after another. So it, it, she, she does live the thug life. That's absolutely awful, and it's embarrassing, and Jenk is basically calling out the people who pointed out that he made a mistake, implying that they have bad motives because Jenk is uncomfortable ever admitting when he's wrong and ever admitting a mistake. Now, you might be saying, Sean, that was really bad. That was really embarrassing, and Jenk should have, like a man, retracted that story instead of somehow making him getting the story wrong, him assuming Sarah Palin said something awful, into a right-wing bad for pointing out how much of a liar, how much of a disingenuous hack Cenk Uger is, and how quickly he'll run with the story, even if it's based solely on him misreading or mishearing a quote, that absolutely makes no sense, and obviously would have drummed up a way bigger controversy had Sarah Palin actually said that. But it's during a presidential election year, and every one of these organizations becomes worse during the presidential election year because obviously they become partisan hacks and tools for one specific party. I don't agree with that, but sure, whatever, whatever, you could make that case. But here's the thing, and I know I've gone to this example before, but the reason I like highlighting this example is because it doesn't matter at all in the grand scheme of things. It's a totally irrelevant story for Cenk Uger and the Young Turks to make up out of whole cloth, but it just goes to show you how they will manufacture news in order to create controversy and quote mine somebody in order to attack them. And of course, I'm talking about something that I did a video on, which was Jenk calling out Dave Ramsey for evicting people during COVID, even though Dave Ramsey was not evicting anybody during COVID, he was actually answering a call from somebody who was saying, hey, look, I base my income off of this one building that I have with everything going on in the market. I'm basically forced to raise rent, otherwise I'm going to go under. Is this acceptable for me to do? And Dave Ramsey told him, of course, you don't have to fall on the sword. You got to do what you got to do to survive. Okay, I own rental property, single family homes, uh, among many other properties that we own. And if I raise my rent to be market rate, um, that does not make me a bad Christian. Uh I did not displace the person out of that house if they can no longer afford it. The marketplace did. The economy did. Um, the ratio of the income that they earned to their housing expense displaced them. And whatever happened to personal responsibility? Um, so he says, I didn't do it. The market did it. Um, no, you very literally did it. Like you got the eviction. Uh, proceedings afoot, you got the resolution, you asked for the authorities to evict them. You literally did every single part of it. Now you could say I did it because the market says I can get more money. So I threw them out in the street so I can make more money. Okay, that's fine. That's your convictions, uh, money is more important. And and by the way, a lot of people make that decision. And I, you know, however much people wanna judge you for that is a different matter. But saying you didn't do it is factually incorrect. Uh, and, and saying that Jesus would have been in favor of it, hence you're a good Christian, is preposterous. Now, the Young Turks go on this whole moralizing rant against Dave Ramsey, talking about how Dave Ramsey filed the paperwork, how Dave Ramsey evicted these people, how Dave Ramsey called the judge, called the sheriff, and all this stuff. When Dave Ramsey is answering a caller, 
clearly and obviously in the original video. On top of that, in order to hide this from the audience of the Young Turks so they don't get suspicious of what the Young Turks is making up out of whole cloth, they actually put their own lower third over where Dave Ramsey's caller information is because like on all these radio shows they usually say this is the person that's calling this is their issue and this is the city or state that they're from so they're deliberately designing the way that they're presenting this video to you which is a snippet of a video so that it could mislead you on what's actually going on and even then you can still hear Dave Ramsey discussing the topic as if he's answering a question from the audience because of course he's answering a question for the audience now i made a video about this i dug up dave ramsey's actual episode i played the full clip of the person asking the question i even showed them side by side i even showed you where you could see under the young turks lower third the parts that are not cut off and how they match and you know what the young turks did in response to that in response to people flooding their comment section pointing out that they were liars and that they were being disingenuous and that they made up an entire segment out of nothing just to go after dave ramsey for no reason they reposted the video months later the same exact video on their channel again just so they could use dave ramsey's name once again in order to smear him for ad revenue on top of that, they also made it a point in the video to call out Ramsey based on his Christianity and talk about how much of a bad guy he was. However, I highlighted a clip from a couple of years back where Jenk was talking about another controversy related to Dave Ramsey, and he talked about how Dave Ramsey specifically helped Jenk out of the goodness of his own heart, out of a Christian duty to other people, set up the Young Turks. Dave Ramsey, um, for no reason at all, when TYT was first starting out, helped us uh, when no one else did. Uh, just like advice and helpful stuff and calls here and there, nobody ever does that. He talked to, to Dave Kohler and walk us through stuff. So he, he's a Christian, he talks about Jesus all the time. But he's a rare Christian that actually means it. So Jenk presents himself as this guy who would never go out of his way to take somebody out of context, even though his whole production team deliberately went out of their way to take Dave Ramsey out of context. They cover up specifically the little thing on the bottom that indicates that they're dealing with a caller. They also only play you snippets of the original clip, so it makes it seem like Dave Ramsey's talking about something that he's doing, and then they eject their own opinions, their own random stuff about about how Dave Ramsey called the sheriff and threw this non-existent poor family that was a tenant of his out on the street when clearly that was not brought up nor referenced at all, even in the clip of the show, even in the snippet of the clip of the show that they put on their network. And this is something that they did to somebody that Jenk has thanked publicly for helping him set up his company, which he uses to smear people. And on top of that, there's no real gain from this. There's no big political point or anything like that. This is a story that doesn't matter. So if the Young Turks will do this to smear a guy because he's Christian, because he's on the right, in a case that does not matter, in a case that's just to fill time, imagine what they do on the big stories. Imagine what they do on the things that they could stretch out over time for years. Remember the Kyle Rittenhouse case where it took the Young Turks, who according to Jenk, by the way, are 10 out of 10 on the facts. So on in our reporting, when we talk about any story, on the facts, we are 100% objective. We never, ever play with the facts. Then we give our perspective. So that's like a newspaper. You get the, the facts in the front, and then you get the editorial in the back, right? So we do we have a perspective? Yes, and we're honest about it. Our perspective is progressive, and we're, everybody's clear about it. Mainstream media also has a perspective. It's that corporate rule is awesome. Status quo is terrific. Nothing should ever change, and we should stay at the top, and you should stay at the bottom. But they're not honest about their perspective. And then they take their corporate perspective and call it objective. Objective my ass. There he is. So zero to ten. Objective. Young Turks. That was on, on, the facts, yeah. on the facts, ten. On the facts, ten. Yes. And, and then, then on our perspective, that's up to you. Do you yeah, agree you with it or get don't to you judge. Okay, you put yourself as a 10. Absolutely. Wow. I mean, okay. No, no, there's two lines that are network. Yeah. One is never advocate for violence, right? 
uh, obvious exception of MMA, et cetera, that's, that's within a ring, within prescribed rules, right? But never advocate for violence and never play with the facts. Year to acknowledge that Kyle Rittenhouse did not cross state lines with an illegal firearm, despite how many times Anna Kasparian told that lie over the course of their coverage. Who took a gun he never should have had across state lines and went to this protest. Who crossed state lines. He drove from Illinois to Kenosha, Wisconsin. Now again, he drove from Illinois to Wisconsin. It's not like he was in his front yard. Yeah. And he was approached by a group of individuals who posed an imminent threat to his life. He drove across state lines in a state that he doesn't even live in. And then he crossed state lines with it. He crossed state lines, meaning he traveled across state lines. He traveled there from out of state, who again, uh, traveled across state lines. 15 minutes after the event in question, all the videos you would need to know that this was self-defense were out in the public. But when Kyle Rittenhouse was found not guilty after the whole entire trial, Jenk was still lying about the case. Even though in the charging document, it said that Joseph Rosenbaum was lunging at Rittenhouse's gun, a gun that he had no right to try to take away from Kyle Rittenhouse, Kyle Rittenhouse who ran away from Joseph Rosenbaum. Jenk is still talking about Kyle Rittenhouse supposedly shooting everybody and anybody that he wanted because they were left wing under the basis that a plastic bag was thrown at him. Which makes it much harder. Now in the case of, of the first uh, person that he shot, uh, it was Rosenbaum who had thrown a plastic bag at him, but someone has shot nearby. He heard the gun sound and he apparently thought something was being thrown at him. He kills uh, the first guy. And, and by the way, just last thing, think about it from this perspective. Kyle Rittenhouse goes in with a weapon into the a protest. He points the he chases people with it. He points the weapon at someone. They then try to wrestle the weapon away because they have a loaded gun pointed at him, a loaded weapon at him, right? A man who police identified as Rittenhouse runs across the parking lot of an auto service shop, followed by a shirtless man who is later identified as Joseph Rosenbaum. First video was Kyle Rittenhouse literally chasing a protester into a parking lot. Followed by a shirtless man who was later identified as Joseph Rosenbaum. Well, so if you're on that jury and it turns out, hey, one of the guys pointed uh, that Kyle Rittenhouse had not done anything, didn't start anything, and one of the guys in the in the crowd pointed a gun at his head, and then he turned around and actually defended himself, then you should let him go. Then he's not guilty. That is actually self-defense, if that's what the evidence shows. So far, we have public evidence. It is not what it shows. It is not at all what it shows. And one of the guys in the in the crowd pointed a gun at his head and then he turned around and actually defended himself, then you should let him go, then he's not guilty. That is actually self-defense, if that's what the evidence shows. So far we have public evidence, it is not what it shows. It is not at all what it shows. But if you have magic evidence that we haven't seen, it's possible. That is clearly not the case. Even the prosecution was not arguing that is the case. But Cenk Uger, 10 out of 10 on the facts, was still making that argument. On top of that, we have the Breonna Taylor case. After the Young Turks already reported that when the cops entered the apartment, Kenneth Walker fired upon the cop, injuring that cop, which Anna Kasparian called a warning shot insanely. The Young Turks reverted back to the original myth of Breonna Taylor, of it being a wrong house, of Breonna Taylor being killed in her sleep, and all that other nonsense. I've documented this phenomenon over and over again on this channel because the Young Turks, despite what Jenk says, are not a 10 out of 10 on the facts. They're an absolute zero on the facts. They get stories wrong that don't matter and they get stories wrong that do matter and they never apologize for it. And even when they correct the record in one video, in the next video, I guarantee you those same myths and misconceptions will be out on full display in the next video as if that correction never happened. Ask Cenk Uyghur about Michael Brown. He still pushes that myth, even though the Department of Justice report within the first eight pages totally confirms through forensic evidence Officer Darren Wilson's testimony. But that's the thing. The whole podcast is total bullcrap. The whole podcast is Cenk Uyghur being incredibly dishonest. And I want to close on this one last point because this guy apparently is an Armenian guy, the host of the podcast, and he brings up the Redskins issue and the Young Turks naming issue, and Cenk Uyghur tries to deflect in the normal way that he deflects on this issue. Uh, but do you think the Washington Redskins being forced to change their names was the right move? So that one's tricky too. So because now you have that name that's over the top offensive, there is no other meaning for 
uh, that word mm -hmm. other than to be derisive, right? Then you've got the Indians, and you say, well, their mascot's terrible, but the name itself is not necessarily offensive. Then you've got the Chiefs, a perfectly acceptable name. There's other one. The Seminoles is actually uh, an ode to the particular tribe in the area that's actually good. It's almost yeah. complimentary. So in the case of Washington, it had no other meaning at all. It was obviously derisive. Uh, and there, so I would say yes, change so, it in that case. So to changing it to commanders, to uh, whatever it is, it yeah, is a yeah, commanders. Yeah, commanders, commanders. I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, I had to ask you guys. Yes, yes. Yes. I had no clue. So let me ask you this. So uh, to, to an Armenian, the Young Turks may be offensive. Would you change your name? Yeah, so Young Turks uh, means young rebels. That's the colloquial use in the English language. You could actually look it up in the dictionary. Sure. And for us, it was young progressives challenging the established system. I mean, that is a textbook definition of what we are, quite literally. But I get that it is offensive to Armenian people. I get that. And so, uh, and, I, and I feel terrible about that, especially because I was wrong about the Armenian genocide. Now, to be clear, Cenk Uygur wrote two different articles denying the Armenian genocide publicly, one in 1991 when he was in school and another one in 1999. Also, Cenk Uygur says the name the Young Turks, which, by the way, is the same organization that carried out the Armenian genocide, doesn't derive from that organization that he was defending because it means young progressive. And remember, Cenk Uygur's network is a progressive network. But here's the thing. If you follow the timeline of when Cenk Uygur bought the domain for Young Turk and Young Turks, what you'll find out is that Cenk Uygur bought those domains before he considered himself a progressive, when he was still a Republican. Cenk Uygur very famously switched sides from Democrats to Republicans, according to his own accounts, during the primaries between George W. Bush and John McCain. Once the Republicans went for George W. Bush, Cenk Uygur was like, I'm not on board, I'm a McCain guy, and Bush is too dumb, so I'm switching to the Democrats. So, if the Young Turks is named for the progressive ideology held by Cenk Uygur now, then why did he buy the domain name three years before he became a progressive? The answer is obvious. Cenk Uygur, who went out of his way to deny the Armenian genocide, didn't acknowledge that it happened all the way until 2018, registered websites under the same name because that was an organization that he looked up to. That was an organization he was interested in defending. That's why he went out of his way to write two letters to the editor, one in 1991 to his school newspaper and one to an actual newspaper to correct the record when they were smearing the organization to which Jeng drew inspiration from. It's not about being young progressives fighting against the establishment. It's about the Young Turks organization and Jeng relating to them based on the fact that Cenk was an active denier of the Armenian Genocide. It is an absolute fact. It is indisputable. It is irrefutable. Cenk's line of reasoning, Cenk's story, does not comport with the reality. Just look at the timeline, because this is what Cenk actually named the organization at. And now that he feels like it's a brand, now that he feels like it's known, he doesn't want to change it because he thinks that that will be giving up market share because everybody associates TYT and the Young Turks with him in his opinion and he would lose money. By the way, this was the exact same argument that Dan Snyder used in order to keep the Redskins name for all of those years, that they would lose so much during the rebrand that it wouldn't be worth it. So overall, I have proven beyond a reasonable doubt that Cenk Uygur is a liar, that Cenk Uygur is insane, and that Cenk Uygur is in fact delusional. But you guys are the jurors, so even though I presented the case, even though I have all the evidence, even though I've documented every step of this and nobody could possibly vote not guilty on all charges because Cenk Uygur is in fact guilty on all charges, you guys let me know your verdict down in the comments below if you like this video you can show me by leaving a like you can subscribe for more content follow me on all my social media support me via the support links in the description box this has been me talking about jank uger's unhinged podcast appearance till next time